So this week we saw the hero that started off in AC from DC being back in black and the clip quickly broke the internet. Nobody knows what it is, but we love superhero costumes and that got me thinking back to one of the biggest mysteries surrounding Matt Reeves' upcoming film. That is, what is the bat symbol on the new bat suit made out of? Though it's been over five months since the first reveal, people still have no idea and there's more questions surrounding it than one of Jim Carrey's skimpiest Riddler costumes. Fear not though, as we think we've finally figured it out and can successfully say what it is. Throughout this video, we're going to be discussing what the chess piece is made out of and why the two main theories are wrong. If you enjoy this, then don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day. With that out of the way, welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and let's get into what the bat symbol really is. Okay, so this was first brought to my attention by Simon Waddle, who I've been talking back and forth with over the last couple of months. Simon was the guy that first spotted that the pouches on Batman's belt were actually for 9mm clips, and from this we drew the conclusion that his grapnel gun could be a repurposed handgun. Simon runs a Twitter account called Big Bat Theory, which I've linked below in the description if you want to follow him and keep up to date with all that he's up to. I couldn't have done this video without him, so definitely show the guy some love. Now as for the bat symbol, there's been two main theories that have predominantly been floating around online. The first states that the bat symbol has been reforged out of the gun that was used to kill Bruce Wayne's parents. It's actually something that's already popped up in Batman Mythos, but since its reveal, no one's been able to nail down the make or model or where it even comes from. So that leads us to our next theory, which is that it's a Batarang. Though this is a pretty cool idea, when you look at the chess piece itself, there's clearly a big gap running down the middle of it. So, in order to use it, Batman would have to take it off, clip it together and then throw it, which uh, takes much longer than just punching someone in the face. If the piece was loose, there's also a chance that it would fall off, and there's no real way to hold these things together securely, especially with the angles that the handles are at, so it just seems, yeah, pointless. You start to wonder, why not just one piece if that's the case? and clearly the darts that he already has on his wrist would be much better for what he intends to do. So it doesn't really seem like either of these theories are true and we can pretty much put them on ice. But what is it instead? Well, we can now confirm that the piece is actually a karambit. Now this sounds crazy at first, but I think the further we get into the video, the more you'll see that it actually lines up quite a lot. We know from the production team that Batman will be using real world items to kit out his arsenal and this has been seen in his Batsuit, Batmobile, Batbike and more. Thus, it makes a lot of sense that he would make the chess piece out of real world items too. Karambits are knives which are readily available and they're actually used in a lot of martial arts fighting. Originally, they were created as an agricultural tool, however, over the centuries, they've become used more and more in self-defense and combat. The design actually originates from Indonesia and is based upon a tiger claw. We know from Batman's long and rich history that before becoming the Dark Knight, Bruce travelled the world picking up many martial arts styles and learning the ins and outs of specific weapons. This of course was shown in his Batarangs, which are based on shurikens, and in his smoke bombs, which he famously got from the League of Shadows. The knife has appeared in John Wick and The Raid 2, and if you've ever seen them up close, then you'll know it's very, very deadly. Now the first thing that you might be saying is that, well, Batman doesn't really use knives. Now that's a fair point, however, he does use a wealth of bladed weapons, such as the Batarangs, and even his armed guards have blades on them too. Obviously though, I know you, and you want more evidence, and Simon was actually kind enough to put together an image with his symbol and the karambits placed into it so that we can see everything lines up. Typically, karambits have a thumb holder so that you can easily keep a hold of them as you flip the knife around your opponent. This is one of the aspects that makes the knife so deadly as it can be used quickly and allow you to change your grip of it without twisting your hands or wrists. Here, we see that the thumb holder isn't present However, there are certain karambits that are made with a loop of thread to allow the piece to move in and out of the weapon quickly. Either that or he could have the thumb loop separate and attached to his belt. Now Simon actually sent me a breakdown of the entire symbol itself and what each piece is, which have turned into a lovely, lovely little graphic that I hope you enjoy. Now firstly, we can see the sharpened edge of the symbol does indeed look like a blade. 
With this side clearly being different to the more blunt aspects of the chess symbol, we can assume that this side is sharp for a specific reason, and thus it adds a lot of weight to the idea that this is indeed a knife. Above it is a specialised magnet, and this may be used to either attach it to his bat belt or the aforementioned thumb loops. However, it also may be there to lock into the chest. This magnet would hold it in place whilst Batman busts up some heads and allow him to place them back into the piece without worrying about which one's going where and whether it's on the right side or not. Now, the fact that there's a locking mechanism really makes me think that this could be interchangeable and that Batman may have several of these that he can put in and take out depending on whether he loses it whilst out crime fighting or, you know, if it just gets stuck in Killer Croc's head or something. This is given further weight by the fact that there's a belt clip also on the Karambit itself. This makes me think that he may already have other Karambits on his belt, so if he loses the one currently on his chest, he can just unclip it and then put them back into the chest piece to make sure that he has a replacement. We all know Batman loves putting bat symbols on everything, he even likes branding people sometimes, so I've no doubt that he would keep a spare lying around just in case. Now Batman hasn't used knives that much in the comics, and I can already hear people out there saying that Batman just wouldn't have it as a weapon because it's too deadly. At this point though, we still don't know whether Batman will kill in this universe, and on the whole, let's be honest, the films tend to lean more towards him being a murderer than not. I always prefer my caped crusader to not be a caped killer, however, these are knives and yeah, though they can be deadly at times, that doesn't mean they always are. Batman will likely be going against bigger opponents down the line, so he may have these as a backup plan just in case. I personally wouldn't want to go against someone like Solomon Grundy with just my fists and a couple of smoke bombs, so it does make sense to, to keep sharper weapons lying around. Batman also uses explosives such as his gel from the Arkham games and bombs which he's used against robots and bigger opponents. Thus, he is ready to use things that can potentially kill should it come down to it, and as I said earlier, we still don't know how Reeves is going to tackle it. Now, Since posting this, Simon has had a couple of people argue with him, including some that still think it's a Batarang. However, he has replied by saying, I've heard that, but I don't buy it. It would be a very over-designed piece of tech for such a simple function that results in it being discarded completely. Batman has a version of proto batarangs in the form of bow shurikens strapped to his arms, and I, uh, and I, <coughs> I completely agree with this. Sorry, sorry about my voice there. Now I actually think that Batman would have this on his chest just in case he needed to whip them out during a, a big fight. On top of all this, it looks like Batman himself may actually be protecting his own body against knife attacks. Now huge shoutouts to Twitter account Batsource for also noticing that Batman's armour is actually shaped pretty much like a SWAT team members. Whether it's the shoulder pads or the chest piece itself, it all seems to be designed around the notion that Batman is going to be going head to head with some heavy hitters. In SWAT team usage, they protect particularly well against bullets, but also knives, and thus it makes sense that if Batman is going to be going against someone carrying blades, that he would be equipped to deal with them himself. So in summary, I'm really settled on this being the case now, as I think it lines up with what we know about the production of the movie itself, and also the direction that Matt Reeves is taking the movie. It's been said that this will be a darker, more grounded Batman that is rooted in reality, and thus, to me, it makes sense for him to take real world weapons and bring them to his arsenal. The fact that the Karambit is a weapon that was developed in the East also lines up with Bruce travelling the world and learning specific martial arts methods, so I think everything sort of falls in place when you start to put it under scrutiny. Now, obviously, I'm sure we've got a lot to talk about, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, and make sure you comment below and let me know. Do you still think it's Joe Chill's gun, or a Batarang, or do you actually agree with our analysis? I'll leave that in your hands and try and reply to as many comments as I can. Again, huge shoutouts to Simon and make sure you follow Big Bat Theory on Twitter for more posts like this. If you want something else to watch that's DC related, then make sure you check out our breakdown of Zack Snyder's Justice Con panel as we go over the clips and discuss everything that you need to know about the black suit and what was said during the discussion. Don't forget that every month on the 15th we give away free Blu-rays and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning the MCU Infinity Saga box set is leave a like and subscribe with notifications on. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. 
You can also come chat to us on our Discord server, linked in the description, or heavy spoilers on Twitter. If not though, thank you for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best, I've been Definition, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.